We are um, in discussions with um, the UN for a premise, and there are dates booked. This is not, you know, we're just in discussions. We actually have looked at dates and availability is there with a premise in Asia Pacific and, again, possibly one in Africa. We're hoping to kind of make that call as to whether or not we need to go to a plan B by the end of this month, the end of March. Um, so I, we don't think we're in a position to be any more specific um, on that at this point in time, but, you know, as it's a question that's been asked often of Chengatai and I, um, particularly over the last month or so, we wanted to be upfront and share as much information as we, we possibly can just now. <coughs> So with, um, with that, uh, next we'll move to the taking stock um, exercise, which is a summary prepared by the Secretariat based on um, the open mic comments from the last IGF, um, based on uh, more formal submissions that were made through the taking stock process and, of course, through um, the input from the various intercessional activities within the IGF community and um, working group inputs and, and that sort of thing. So, Changatai? Uh, thank you very much, Lynn. Uh, so, wh what I'll do is that I will um, just summarize what, um, some s summarize from the synthesis paper the different parts. So, for agenda item um, 2A and B, or 2B, I'll just su summarize quickly and then we open the floor and get that and then I'll summarize for again item C so that, so that we just keep it uh, specific to, to those items and we don't encourage people to say everything and then we can take bit better notes. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so the, um, the Secretariat issued an open call to the community for inputs to its stock taking process. Um, the call asked for reflections on what had worked well and what had worked not so well uh, for the IGF 2017 meeting, um, the, the meeting itself and also the intersessional activities, as well as suggestions for improvements in the 2018 cycle. In response to this call, the Secretary received a total of 34 submissions from uh, uh, all stakeholder groups and regions. Uh, this number is consistent with what we received in the previous year, in 2016 as well. Um, several IGF dynamic coalitions and um, national and regional, regional initiatives, um, also from the private sector, ICC Basis, Microsoft. Um, we had uh, submissions from civil societies such as APC and as well as a whole range of individuals. Um, the full list uh, can be seen um, on our summary document and also all the individual summaries are, um, all, all the in individual inputs are available on our website. Overall, the community was highly satisfied with last year's meeting. Many contributions expressed deep thanks and appreciation to the government of Switzerland for hosting the IGF. They noted the smooth, efficient organization of the meeting, as well as the professionalism and excellent support from the Swiss and the Secretariat teams on the ground. Uh, also, I should also add from the UNOD team as well. Inputs were also appreciative of the wide-ranging support from logistical and organizational matters to substantive guidance provided by the host country in the run-up and preparation of the IGF. Submissions to the process varied considerably in scope and opinion. However, there were a few general high-level takeaways and areas of overlap or commonality that the Secretariat felt it could extract from the total contributions. Uh, participants expressed that the IGF had in many ways proven its relevance w w with the 2017 meeting. The d discussion of frontier issues such as um, artificial intelligence, blockchain, fake news, showed that the IGF is really responding to the new and emerging issues of the day. Uh, thanks to the meeting being held in Geneva, more governments and IGOs were also present and created an opportunity 
for exchange with policy and decision makers that was highly appreciated. At the same time, as it evolves, the IGF has maintained its strong commitment to multi-stakeholderism and openness. Participants continued to feel that regardless of their stakeholder group and nationality, they could still come to the IGF and have their voices heard on an equal footing with all other participants. The content of the meeting was very good, but several times it was noted that the quality of the discussions at the IGF was very high and that many interesting speakers were featured. The program was rich and diverse and this can continue to be regarded as a strength. However, it was also felt that the annual program may have become too expansive for its own good. The agenda could do with more focus and more thematic coherence across the overarching theme. Main sessions and themes or sub-themes. As a result of this, there were many suggestions to make structural changes to the program. A desire for outcomes. Several submissions either praised the newly launched Geneva messages as a synthesis mechanism that should be maintained moving forward or made recommendations for more outcomes or more outcome orientation of the IGF activities and annual meeting. These are all the ideas the MAG and the Secretariat should take under consideration in the coming days and months. Okay, the comments on the program, main themes, sub-themes, uh, structure of session types, including the new and innovation, innovative, sorry, session types of the schedule. Stock taking contributions noted that the themes of the main sessions in 2017, in particular cybersecurity, were highly relevant and that the sessions themselves were strategically focused in such a way to facilitate positive and meaningful exchanges across stakeholder groups. The suggestions was also made, however, to have main session themes more closely reflect the sub-themes and to consider shortening main session durations. Inputs noted that the overarching theme, Shape Your Digital Future, was appropriately broad and inclusive. Observations were also made, however, that in the general and thematic direction of the program should have stronger ties to the UN 2030 agenda. For overall greater structural coherence in the program, some suggestions were made to dedicate each day in the schedule to a single theme or having the main sessions on a different day. Many inputs appreciated all new and innovative session formats featured in the 2017 program and want to see more of these moving forward. Workshops, which were seen as generally having improved in terms of having more balanced composition of speakers, it was said, should st strive even more to be less panel formatted. Some submissions suggested having fewer workshops in the program overall. In terms of the participation in the 2017 meeting, many noted the vibrant and diverse mix of stakeholders. Participation from government and IGO stakeholders was felt to be particularly strong and participation from the global south was also said to be good. However, many called for more support and strengthened youth engagement as well as much stronger participation from the private sector. I'll pause here and um, if the chair would open it to the floor for comments on um, to be. So the floor is now open for comments on um, this particular uh, portion of the agenda and then we'll move on to um, the day zero logistics and some of the other sessions. We'll give people a moment to use the queue and make sure I'm actually accessing it here as well. know some of you have thoughts on, <laughs> on the <laughs> meeting. I can't walk down the hall without hearing those thoughts on the meeting, so I really need some 
voices. Um, uh, so I'm waiting. Yes. Okay, you have the floor. I think you're probably trying to get into the speaking queue because I can see it working hard. But <laughs> yes, I, I, exactly. Thank you. I'm I'm trying to get there, but somehow I need a password, and I don't know where I might have put it last time around. So. Um, all right, let me go back to where I was. Um, um, first of all, my name is Christiane Roy. I am here with the Canadian Permanent Mission. Um, this year was the first time that I had I was given the pleasure to actually physically participating in an IGF. Um, previous two years, I, I watched sessions remotely, uh, which was highly frustrating because they looked very interesting. And so this year was a, a big reward for me. Um, <clears throat> I, um, I would tend to um, agree with many of the, uh, the comments that uh, have been made to date. Uh, certainly for me, this experience was, uh, was definitely um, um, interesting and worth it. Um, and the diversity of, uh, of, of participants uh, was what made it so rich. Um, the fact that we were able to speak uh, freely without any pressures of coming to an outcome uh, also was essential, I think, in, in allowing sort of a freedom of thought, uh, a, a good uh, exploration of themes, because we weren't bound by what, uh, what was being said. We were able to just, um, you know, um, debate things uh, without any pressure of producing an outcome or recommendations. Um, so, so in that sense, I would tend to um, perhaps disagree slightly with the suggestions that, uh, that IGF needs to be more focused on outcomes and recommendations, uh, because I think that that would, uh, from my experience, it would harm the ability that, that we are given by participating in the IGF, that there's no pressure. Um, um, to react a little bit to some of the comments that we heard from the host country, um, indeed, I would very much like to thank them um, for having organized such an excellent uh, forum this year. And I would concur with, um, with the merits of the opening session. Um, there is nothing more deadly than to hear a series of monologues by high-level representatives. Um, this year, I thought it was nice. It was interactive. Uh, certainly, the, the moderator you had picked was excellent because she was really able to go and draw out the questions and say, okay, let's push this further. And, and I think that this is what, this is the purpose of the IGF, is, is an ability to push this further, um, push the thinking without having the pressure of coming with an outcome of recommendation. So certainly, um, I would endorse uh, pursuing this, um, this idea of, of a more interactive um, um, opening uh, introductory session. Um, on the Geneva messages, um, during the forum itself, I personally was not aware that this was taking place. Um, neither was the, um, um, the um, organizer of the session for which I was a rapporteur for, which was one of the main sessions. So at some point, a day after the meeting, we received a message from a nice gentleman saying, these are the main points, uh, do you agree with them? And we were like, yes, those were indeed the main points, what are you going to do with that? And he said, well, um, um, we are preparing these for the IGF. Um, so. Great, they were, they were good, uh, but they sort of overlapped a little bit with what we thought was a role for a rapporteur. Um, personally, I think the Geneva messages would be a good replacement for the work of a rapporteur in the sense that they, would, they end up being more uniform, and then they remove this burden from the session organizer, which is already a big thing, a big deal to organize session, manage panelists. If afterwards you have to manage a, a rapporteur report, which to this day I still don't know what is the format for uh, a rapporteur to, to do for the session, who you send it, it and where it's posted afterwards. Um, so certainly um, going forward, if we were to uniformize the, the Geneva message format, I think it would be very good. There was a shortcoming I think for this year in terms of it was not well advertised and it's just now when you we talk about it and I went back to the IGF 2017 main page and oop it's right up there um, there's a you know there's a click a, a link to it uh, very visible on the main page now but it wasn't there during the actual IGF um, so in that sense I think this, this is a good thing for the future um, it just needs to be better explained um, especially for session organizers who perhaps 
uh, certainly in the case of my session, which turns out was a MAG member who organized it on top of that. Um, he had no idea what this was for. Um, <clears throat> Um, on the point of uh, linking the IGF with the SDGs, um, I would say that yes, indeed, it is very important, um, but I would be concerned about uh, making this a very strict rule because the SDGs are now fixed in time and, and they're, they're very good and they're very broad, um, but they don't cover everything. They don't cover emerging issues. And this is one of the good things that was about this year is that we, the IGF, the sessions, were actually quite responsive to new things like AI and, 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 and fake news and attacks on democracy. Now, I'm not sure how you know, the, the issue of fake news fits in nicely with one of the SDGs right now. So, so yes, there should be an alignment, but I wouldn't want that in the future IGFs to be a firm commitment that everything we do needs to be correlated with in the SDGs. Um, so I will stop there for now, but certainly uh, a big congratulations both to the host country and to the MAG for having put on such a, such a, great, uh, a great event uh, where we met with really interesting people um, and, and, and the format and the timing were, were actually very smooth running um, and certainly made me love the IGF even more than I did before without ever having attended one. So thank you very much. Th thank you. Um, that was Canada. In the speaking queue, we have Jim Pendergrass. Again, if people could say their names and um, their organization and stakeholder group, that would be helpful. Thank you. Jim? Uh, thank you, Chair. Good morning. My name is Jim Prendergast with the Galway Strategy Group. Um, I had to rearrange my notes because you changed it up on us a little bit, but uh, it keeps us on our toes. I saw Christiane as well scrolling through what she had previously written. So I'm going to cheat and actually read some notes because uh, I had it differently. But um, first off, like everybody else, thanks to uh, Thomas and Jorge uh, for really putting together a, a, a good meeting. I think many of us, as we were making our way to the meeting this morning, wish that we had brought our IGF caps with us not thinking it would be so cold and at this time of the year. Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> I saw one spotted in Ottawa two weeks ago, too, so they are making their way around the world. All right. Um, shows you the, sh the swag is really important. That's what people remember. Um, you know, I, too, uh, really appreciate the attempt to make the opening ceremony more interactive. Um, I don't think anybody really looks forward to going to the opening ceremony when it's a parade of 27 speeches. So um, I don't know if we're quite there yet. I think what I've heard from folks that I've spoken to is that they would prefer or like to see a little more audience interaction. Um, interaction between speakers and a moderator is good, but the next level will be trying to integrate more of the audience into those discussions. I don't quite sure how I, I uh, I'm not sure how you accomplish that, but um, that's something to think about moving forward. So. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about um, the workshop formats and, and how those were, um, how those happened this year. You know, I think I'm pretty well established on record as being a fan of highly interactive formats. I appreciate the efforts of the MAG to force people to look at new and innovative formats for workshops. Um, but at the same time, there are still workshops that are being approved by the MAG that contain 15 to 20 speakers. Um, so I, I would encourage the MAG as you move into the planning for the next meeting to walk the talk and enforce what you are looking for. Um, if there are 20 speakers, if there are 12 speakers, really think hard about whether or not <coughs> that is meeting the need and the call for new and innovative workshops. Um, on the, um, on the, you know, I, I think it was touched on, you know, on the call for outcomes, I know this is something that we talked a lot about over the next three days and probably for the next three years. Um, I would suggest, personally, I don't think we have an outcomes problem. I think we have a marketing problem. There is a long list of outcomes that come from an IGF, uh, both in the past and in the future, things like dynamic coalitions, best practice forums, all the workshop reports, all of the recordings, the transcripts. The, the NRIs are an outcome of the IGF. So. Um, why there is there's a call for more outcomes I think we have them we probably just don't do a good enough job packaging them and making them accessible to people who are looking for them so I think that might be a, a good area of emphasis for the for the next year um, 
On the theme, I know Jorge talked about how the theme sort of brought people together. Um, I would just recommend to the, especially the new members of the MAG and frankly to the old members of the MAG, don't spend two and a half, three hours debating the theme. It's, it's important, but I think, you know, there are other things that you need to sort of be focused on. And um, whatever it is, people will come to the IGF and they will talk about a, a, you know, a wide range of activities, which brings me to the last point, Christian, I think you brought up as well, is not necessarily tying the, the theme of the IGF to the SDGs in a, in a way that binds or puts boundaries around the topics for conversation. Um, one of the things that we know about this space is that the issues change rapidly. Um, the way this meeting is traditionally set up is the call for workshops come in the spring and the, the IGF is held in the fall slash winter. There are a lot of things that hit the radar in those intervening times that I think would be valuable uh, for members and attendees of the IGF to be discussing. And I think we need to allow for that flexibility going forward. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Jim. I think your point on the fact that there are a lot of outcomes, it's more a matter of marketing them more. I think we used to say making them accessible, which sometimes means consolidation and grouping and aggregation and most of things is, is an important point. And I should thank Christiane and Canada for going first and, and jumping in there as well with such a, such a thorough um, coverage. In the, the queue, um, we have um, Raquel Gatto, Marilyn, G has had his flag up here in the room, um, so I will put you in after Marilyn, and then again, you can see the remaining people in the queue as well. Um, still would like to encourage everybody to use the queue. You can access it from your mobile devices as well. You simply need to be online and, and uh, logged in through your IGF login. Um, but just now, Raquel, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. And um, so my name is Raquel Gatto. I'm a MAG member uh, on my second term representing technical community, but I'm not acting as a MAG member. Uh, I really want to convene a message in preparing. Isaac presented uh, a formal contributions for this talk taking. But in the preparations for those meetings, we also went for further. Um, and we just issued last week, if you didn't saw a blog post from Raul Echeverria, it's our vice president and also a former MAG member. He was pretty deeply involved in all the creation of the IGF itself. Um, and we're really putting out um, a challenge for, uh, well, for the community and for the MAG members to take in on the reflections to reform the IGF. Uh, we obviously see a lot of value within the IGF. Uh, we can hardly say that the world is much better with the IGF than we doubted, uh, but we do have a reality check uh, in terms of the discussions we are taking and the way we can approach them uh, and the way we can frame those uh, into the program and into the processes that the IGF takes uh, and really value uh, them more, like improve them much more. Uh, I'm not going to, uh, through the details, I think that's uh, something we, we will take in the MAG uh, in the next few days, or I hope we do. Uh, but I, I, I do uh, want to point out some of those challenges and uh, some of those fatigue uh, that we see within the community uh, and that we could uh, really make a call for action. We're really good on talking over these problems and over thinking sometimes, uh, but it's walk the talk, and I think it was said uh, previously. Uh, it's really making a very pragmatic approach, uh, strategic also in that sense. Um, and the five points that we put out as uh, challenges that we, we should uh, reflect on is first to simplify the program, meaning having less sessions. We have too much parallel sessions, too much repetitive discussions. We need to be bold to remember President Latar by the time of the opening when she said we need to be courageous. And that means, in short, the program. Uh, making also more focused discussions. That's the second point. I mean, we have about eight or nine components with the program, including workshops, main sessions, uh, all the, the intersessional work, etc. It needs to be better um, linkage together. It needs to be the, the, the whole package under one team and avoiding um, then uh, similar discussions to being parallel. Uh, we also need to uh, better build on the outcomes. Perhaps it's 
not the outcomes itself, it was said before too, uh, but if you think about the linkage and what we do with those outcomes and how we present them and how we bring them to the community to comment uh, and really say, we left the IGF with this and this and this, we need to be more clear uh, and, and much better uh, in that sense. Uh, we also need uh, to reduce the requirements and the costs for the IGF. Um, I do believe that one of the, uh, the problems when we have so many multiple sessions, when we have so many multiple requirements for a host country, that's going to be hard uh, for the developing uh, countries to be hosting the IGF. And by reframing and reforming the, the, the program, we could really have more hosts perhaps as candidates for the upcoming years. Um, and so now to be sure, uh, I think we, if we can agree on those challenges and if we can take it uh, forward, uh, we can detail many ideas that we have already heard from the community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raquel. Um, this is also a very comprehensive contribution. Um, next, we have Marilyn in the queue. While Marilyn gets set up, I want to put Marilia in the queue as well. Um, if you're in now. Okay, excellent. Great. Thank you. Thank you for using the system. Marilyn, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, and greetings to all colleagues. I want to um, both thank the Secretariat and the host country, as I know many others will today, and also in the next two days for the fabulous uh, uh, event that we had together and experience that we had together uh, last year at the IGF 2017. And I want to make a comment about an innovation in the program that uh, perhaps not everyone um, recognized as much as I did and why I think it was so important. By meeting here in Geneva and at the Palais, we were able to reach a Geneva community of IGOs, intergovernmental organizations, and international organizations, and a development community that otherwise we have not been able to uh, reach on a broad basis. That is just a locality issue, but a very important contribution, particularly as we are charged by the Secretary General to take into account the 2030 agenda and the linkage between internet governance and the SDGs. Prior to that 2017, we were fortunate if we would have four or five of the IGOs regularly contributing, and we were able to reach well over 30 of the intergovernmental organizations and a much broader business community, the Geneva Business Network, and the Rotary Club that is located here, which brought us into contact with a whole new group of people that were not previously aware of us. And I want to mention that as a positive outcome as well, because of course I take note, as someone from the business community, of the importance of reaching all of the different stakeholder groups. For myself, I'm going to make a comment. I am a former MAG member. Uh, I have been at every one of the open consultations, and once the MAG meetings were open, I continue to attend them. I fully support the idea that we must continue to involve and enhance the IGF, but I offer a word of caution to MAG members. You're only on the MAG for three years. This may sound a little tough, but nobody died and appointed you permanently in charge of planning the program or advising the Secretary General. You're part, when you, before you come on and after you go off, of a broader community. So in evolving and enhancing the IGF, I think it's really important that the MAG and the Secretariat think of themselves as merely a conduit to reaching out to the broader community. And now I want to make a comment about an innovation that took place last year that I personally was very involved in, and that is the success of the NRI to NRI sessions, the National and Regional Initiative sessions. It was a tough struggle, frankly, with some of the MAG members in the March meeting to understand the importance of the NRI to NRI collaboration. And in the end, I felt that we um, 
perhaps have not had an opportunity but should take the opportunity at some point to explain the importance of these separate, um, they are not workshops and they are ways that NRIs communicate and share the commonality and the difference around certain topics that they're experiencing locally. I had the benefit of moderating two, one on um, fake news, misinformation, and disinformation, and one on the much broader definition of uh, access, but taking into account cultural and societal differences in access challenges. These opportunities existed parallel to the workshops, did not compete with them, and at least the two that I moderated, the NRIs that co-organized from a bottom-up perspective, supported by our great focal point and the Secretariat, have agreed to continue to examine those issues to ask their national IGFs if they wish to take that issue up again at the national level and then come back. I think that also is an outcome. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Marilyn. Those are very good points. And in, in particular with your last comment on the NRIs, one of the um, fairly significant pieces of work that is in front of the MAG this coming year is to look at all of the um, various intersessional components, if you will, and really understand um, where we can collaborate more and how we can integrate better, both to help increase um, their impact as well as, of course, to enrich um, us here at the, in the preparations for the global meeting. So I think that is a fairly significant um, piece of work that's that's um, ahead of us. Uh, next in the queue, we have Ji. Ji Hajun, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, first of all, I, I would like to say that uh, um, the IGF we had he <coughs> in Geneva last year is very uh, uh, is very much success, big success. And but uh, on some you know, uh, front, we still have room to f to improve. For example, the standard of screening and the selection of workshops. Um, currently, we have, I have an impression that we are focusing too much on whether this or this group of panelists, uh, they are famous or not. But, uh, um, you know, this as a, as a international global forum, we should listen to uh, everybody from all over the world. And we should, um, therefore, put more emphasis on equal geographical distribution. To, listen, to have more in the future, we, we need to put in place new standards of screening and success selection that uh, uh, more workshops from developing countries, even least, least develop con developing countries, can uh, you know, come on board. And, uh, 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 my experience of uh, participating in those uh, workshops from these small and de less developed countries, they have their perspective. They, they, ha they have their needs and requirements and expectations. And uh, uh, some of those workshops uh, are, are indeed very successful. Um, the second thing is about how do we make good or better use of the results of our work, of the, the, the annual session. Um, um, we all know that uh, each and every workshop would uh, generate their, their summary or report. Now if we put, to put all these reports together, it will be a huge volume. So it's, it's very difficult to reach out and to disseminate them. I'm, I'm wondering uh, if we can, uh, you know, the member, MAG members or we can uh, uh, invite some academic people from the academia that uh, to to compile and edit and to converge the cream of those those results so that we can have an annual publication or yearbook which is like two or 200 or 300 pages and uh, it's it, it easy you know to distribute by hard copy or or in, in electronic version by you know uh, by distribution electronic version so that uh, um, th the work of IGF would have higher visibility in the global community. <coughs> the, the third is that uh, uh, we know that uh, um, the Secretary General, uh, His Excellency Guterres is uh, um, working hard on improving the work of UN system. 
um, both on the peace and development uh, fronts um, and uh, the cyber uh, uh, gov internet governance or cyber cooperation is uh, very much part of his new effort and uh, we hope that uh, Chair or uh, Changta can convey our words to, to the Secretary General's office that uh, MAG is a established mechanism. We have our expertise, we have our knowledge, and we have our views to contribute to their new endeavor. Thank you. Thank you, Ji. Uh, next in the queue, we have Vut. Vut, you have the floor. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Walter Natris. I'm a consultant, but when I speak here, I'm representing a very broad section of the Dutch national IGF, who made it possible to write a report on strengthening cooperation within the context of the IGF, which I hope to be speaking on a bit later today. I would like to reflect here on some of the outcomes in that report that is actually uh, the topic ri right now in this section of the agenda. Um, first of all, that we've been talking about, about outputs, and one of the things that came out there is that uh, the first one is, like everybody is saying already, that we need to learn to celebrate our successes, something I said at the, op at the open mic session at the end of the IGF last year. That I think that's something which is very important because that puts more focus on what we do here and it will attract more people. But we also need to learn to distribute that successes, and that is something that perhaps we have to work on together more closely. Um, one of the things that we, or when we talk about outputs in the report is that perhaps it would be more advised to look at issues that happen within one stakeholder community that is actually has a, a severe impact on other stakeholders. And one of the, an example that came up is that in the session on day zero we held on this report is that the IETF said, well, we're just doing our thing. And I said as moderator, yes, okay, but what is that thing? And they said, well, we're actually changing the internet protocol. We're working on that. And then a whole, the, basically the whole room started saying, what are you guys doing? A government said, we need to know about this. Industry said, we need to know about it. And then they said, Perhaps we need to do something on that topic in 2018 at the IGF. Well, that is perhaps an item that is literally presenting itself. Um, I'll come back to that later today also. But that is some, something that where when you talk about impact, that is something which could have actually an output that could help the whole community further. And th the same will be for ICANN or for the MOG or for whatever community is working on something that will impact other stakeholders and where better to discuss it at the IGF because we all come together here. When we talk about focus on topics, I noticed last year that there were 10 sessions on artificial intelligence, five on blockchain and 16 on whatever, for example. I know I'm exaggerating a little, but what if we put focus on those topics? Because we have all these brilliant minds coming together and they discuss something, maybe they get one or two questions, they listen to the story from others that they probably have heard 10 times before in other venues. But what do we actually want to get out of a discussion on artificial intelligence, IoT, security, etc.? That is something when you have all these stakeholders together, you could actually organize some sort of a session for one day or two days or whatever it takes to have some sort of an outcome saying, in our community, we need to look at this specific topic and in that community on that. And that would actually have a major output without impeding on freedom of speech because you, you're, there's nothing definite or a resolution coming out of it. Then a little sense of warning in the whole preparatory uh, process towards the report, several people from the technical industry and a government background said the IGF is getting less and less attractive for us because the topics that we're look looking at, I'm walking around there for four days and there's really not one session that I really should be at because I'm going to learn something. And other people that are worried about it because apparently the sort of workshops do not come out of a specific community enough at this point in time, or perhaps they were rejected or they're not submitting any. I don't have the answer to that, unfortunately. 
The fourth one is a, a flexibility on the, in the program. It has to be mentioned before, a lot of things come up, but I've got one good example, I think, that in the best practice forum of cybersecurity I participated at, two or three topics came up that really needed a session to learn more about the, because there were not enough people knowledgeable enough in the best practice forum present. But there's nothing in the program allowing, saying, okay, we need to have this specific session on this specific topic to learn more, to have a better outcome in the, in the program. So that's something that, that I, I took along also. And then I'm putting off my hat and just a personal one on the workshops. I have attended a few very, very good workshops last year. But somewhere half along the route, somebody said, we're only talking about a specific group and there's no representation of the group in the panel nor in the room. So in other words, that is something that perhaps was overlooked when the workshop was vetted or people pulled out somewhere along the route. So perhaps instead of just vetting something in the program, it would be good if some MAC members were actually some sort of coach or of assistance to that working group. So when they run into this sort of problem, actually they could help or assist by bringing other people to the panel along the route when things go wrong. And in another way is that some of the workshops ended where they should have started. So all, all of a sudden it was, well, we've got this problem together. And perhaps with a little bit of coaching or some better questions asked up front, perhaps halfway of the session they would have reached that conclusion so that they would have really brought the discussion forward instead of leaving for another year with Everybody, you know, everybody goes home, goes back to their jobs. And I think there's another way of perhaps improving it by asking more detailed questions, except just asking for, do you have the right gender balance or the right regional balance? No, do you have the most brilliant mind on this topic in your, because he's here. I think I would like to leave it at that and hopefully I get a little more time this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Walt, that was very, um, very helpful, and you know you've been pushing on some of these issues for the last year or so. So, so I look forward to bringing them forward in the mag. And I think your comment and some of the comments from the taking stock session and other comments in the room, I think really s start to speak to um, the role of the mag as we actually develop the program. Pretty much, it's been bottom up community, and there's a selection of workshops, and it's been community driven. Um, if if a lot of these calls are pointing towards the MAG taking more responsibility for streaming or shaping or um, integrating or tying various MAG sessions together, we need to think about how that's done. And I think that impacts the call that we actually put out for workshops, which is a significant piece of work the MAG will be doing in the next um, few weeks or so. So I think there's a lot to, to think about there, and I'm sure we'll come back to it probably in some of the additional comments that we have, but certainly over the next couple of days as well. So, Huyen, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is uh, Julian Casas Buenas, and I'm a MAC member from civil society, and this is my third term. I'm making this input on behalf on the, of the Association for Progressive Communications in my capacity as a member of the APC Board of Directors. APC is an international civil society network with more than 90 members, most of whom participate actively in the IGF process. APC has been an active supporter of the IGF since in inception. Thank for the opportunity to make this input. Uh, we thank Switzerland, Geneva, and Secretariat, the MAC, and all who contributed to a successful IGF. The presence of a diverse group of people, including many newcomers, created a rare and valuable opportunity uh, for learning and cross-regional and cross-sector dialogue and for voicing concerns. Looking forward, we want to highlight a few points included in our writing submission. Intersessional work is extremely important and needs to be well resourced. We echo the remarks of uh, Marx Kummer in his submission that appointing consultants to work with best practice forums needs to be one early on in the process. 
We also agree with him that more interaction between best practice forums, dynamic collisions, and NRIs is needed. Put audience participation first. Make sure that sessions are uh, not fluted with panelists. Always consider gender in the composition of panels and the treatment of topics. Simplify the structure of the IGF. Consider changing the overall structure to have two days of workshops followed by two days of main sessions interspersed with round tables and best practice forums. This structure will enable deepening in of the discussion on some topics and facilitate developing key messages, outcomes, and link to intersessional work. Encourage government participation. Consult them proactively on issues they will like to see discussed at the IGF. Designate a member of the Secretariat to play a government liaison role to make sure they participate in and benefit from, from intersessional work. Improve aspects of MAC selection and operation. Appoint the MAC before the end of the calendar year and make the selection process more transparent. Introduce more support for the chair. We congratulate the chair on her reappointment and thank her for her fantastic work. We propose that she creates a Friends of the Share group to work with her to assist with the workload and ensure that voices from all regions and stakeholders groups are reflected in MAC consideration, coordination. Appoint the special advisor and the executive secretary. Their absence still leaves a gap in spite of the increased capacity and performance of IGS staff and the significant value added by the excellent MAC chairperson. Strength, outreach, and outputs. The Geneva messages are a positive innovation, but we think more can be done to package IGF outputs for use by policymaking processes. Some of the best practice forums have done this very effectively. We have some specific suggestions in our submission. Encourage and facilitate the media presence at the IGF. Media presence has been uneven. The MAC and the Secretariat should develop and implement a media outreach strategy. In closing, we have the impression that the IGF is being taken for granted and undervalued including by some of its traditional supporters. The IGF can and should evolve its methods and strengthen the diversity of participation. But we want to stress that the IGF is essential to the goal of inclusive, democratic, multi-stakeholder policymaking and implementation. National and regional IGF supports this goal but cannot achieve it on their own. As challenges related to the use and abuse of the internet increase, we need the IGF more than ever. The failure of the working group of enhanced cooperation in internet governance to agree on recommendations just reinforce how critical the IGF is as a platform for collab collaborative internet related public policy problem solving. We urge the MAC secretariat, host countries, the broader IGF community, and those who provide financial support to continue their invaluable work. Quoting Raul Echeverria of Isaac in his recent blog, the world is much better with the IGF than without it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Julian, and thank you to APC for uh, such a comprehensive statement as well. Uh, next in the queue, we have Maciela. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is Marilia Maciel speaking. I'm a researcher at Diplo Foundation, but uh, I'm speaking on my personal capacity here. Um, first of all, I'd like to join others who have uh, welcomed incoming MAG members and also the MAG members who are returning and uh, thank them for their commitment and, and their work here, with, which is extremely important for the IGF. I would also like to thank the, the Swiss government for holding what I think was a very smooth uh, and, and perfect IGF in terms of the organization and for being hosts that do not only do their job but also get extremely involved and committed with the IGF uh, future. And one of the suggestions that I know the Swiss and others were also involved is the messages from Geneva. 
And my first observation is about the outputs. I think that the messages from Geneva were a great uh, step and another initiative to try to implement what the CSED Working Group on IGF improvements suggested to have more concrete outcomes from the IGF. And this is very welcome. But there was another thing that was very important uh, for us who were part of the working group at the time, which is the linkages that the IGF needs to have uh, with other organizations and the follow up after the, the IGF. And I think that this goes beyond packaging, as was mentioned before here. Packaging is very important. Uh, however, we need to have more proactive engaging with engagement with other forums and other organizations that are starting to deal more and more with digital policy issues. Um, speaking more specifically of uh, e-commerce, which was a topic that I've been involved for for a couple of years now, we have seen how the the WTO is discussing an increasing number of digital policy issues from a trade perspective. Um, so we sit with negotiators at the WTO who are very very knowledgeable about trade, um, but that are confronted right now to discuss encryption, data localization, data flows, and network neutrality. And this is very difficult because they do want to make the best decisions. However, sometimes they do not have the best income and support uh, to discuss these issues. Um, so I think that it's important to, to raise awareness that the IGF is a great space uh, that these negotiators working in other organizations can come to, to look for information, to look for guidance, to look for networking. However, this will not be done only with making information available, but we need to make sure that this information uh, reaches out uh, to them. And there's a very important role, I think, that the, the MAG members and the Secretariat can play with that in making sure that uh, there are connections being made with these other organizations. Um, for example, uh, we know that there will be uh, the, the UNCTAD e-commerce week, it's coming up in, in April, and there are several sessions that are related to digital. Uh, in last, last year, the UNCTAD e-commerce week, week was uh, absolutely digital in all its programs and sessions. Um, so it's important to make sure, and we had a main session last IGF on economic issues that had very interesting uh, uh, messages and, and, and outputs coming from it. So it's important to make sure that these messages are voiced in spaces like like the UNCTAD. Um, coming up to the role of the, of the MAG, I think that it is true that the MAG has an important role to play when it comes to, to networking and to forwarding these messages, but also to make sure that the program of the IGF, it's more, it's more tight and, and concise. I think that mergers perhaps should be the rule here, not the exception. We participate in many other conferences, and it's, it's very common that our, our proposals get merged. And to me, it's very rewarding, because I have the chance to work with people that otherwise I would not meet. And to ch challenge my own perceptions about the sessions that I was nice. But sometimes mergers are seen here in the IGF as if the session organized is being somehow punished or the session was not good enough. It needs to be merged with someone else. And uh, I think that we should perhaps approach mergers with more easiness and make sure that we have stronger and fewer sessions. Um, I believe that the MAG should also have a role in identifying the, the key, key topics of the year. And I think that, that perhaps it's, it's the moment to achieve a balance between uh, this bottom-up approach to agenda setting of the IGF, which is very important, but also to some strategic guidance coming from the MAG when it comes to identifying the issues that are really begging to be discussed because they are being, being discussed everywhere else. And uh, MAG has a, had a role with that when it comes to organizing main sessions. But unfortunately, main sessions are not very conducive to interactive discussions because they're too big, because there are too many people, and it's hard to change that. So perhaps it is time for the MAG to organize smaller sessions. In ICANN, we have something that we call the high interest sessions. Um, and this is something that could explore, perhaps not use the same name workshops, not to give the idea that we are trying to change the bottom up nature, but high interest sessions, sessions that are smaller, but that are organized around topics that really uh, need to be discussed because everyone else is dealing with that particular year. So having said that, uh, I think that uh, MAG members perhaps uh, could have a more stronger role in strategic thinking about the IGF, and uh, that, that is what I would personally expect from incoming MAG members. Thank you. Thank you, Marilia. We certainly see a lot of consistency in some of the comments with respect to the, the need for reformation of the, of the program. Mark Carvel, Mark, you have the floor. 
Yes, thank you, Lynn, and congratulations uh, to you on your uh, reappointment, and welcome to uh, the new MAG members. Uh, my name is Mark Carvel. I'm with the UK Government's Ministry, uh, the Department uh, for Digital Culture, Media and Sport. Uh, I'm a former MAG member. Um, unfortunately, I personally wasn't able to attend the IGF in Geneva. Uh, I had to pull out at the last minute due to personal circumstances. But I was pleased that the UK government had several policymakers attending. And um, overall, um, our impressions were that this was a very uh, successful IGF. And we appreciate very much the Swiss government hosting the IGF uh, last year and approaching it in such an innovative way. I think that was... Uh, providing an opportunity for some refreshing of the uh, planning and the programming and uh, I would certainly uh, support building on those innovations that the Swiss government introduced in uh, Geneva. It's, uh, the IGF is a success. It's important as uh, other colleagues here have commented. Uh, it's uh, the comments that have been made about uh, Geneva have all been, I think, v uh, made in a very constructive way. The IGF is on a direction. It's, it's an evolutionary one, uh, and we will continue to, we, the UK government, will continue to support it. We're a donor we're to help fund the Secretariat. We have always been so. And, um, but the point is, we do need to learn from experience and... Uh, help the IGF evolve in a strong, positive way that's going to continue to attract uh, the whole panoply of stakeholder communities, including more governments. Um, it was good in Geneva that the number of uh, government representatives attending was, was, was higher. Of course, we may not well expect such an opportunity of close proximity of missions uh, as there was in Geneva at future IGFs, but it's, I think, uh, a breakthrough and, and we in the UK government, we will continue to advocate the importance of sustaining governmental participation in this important WISIS outcome. Um, a lot of very useful comments made today and in the stockholding process, and we would support certainly exploring how the IGF program could be simplified with fewer parallel sessions and also to reduce the number of days. I th this would all help, I think, uh, ensure that uh, the IGF is not considered too difficult to navigate and it would also enhance the opportunities of, of focusing down on the issues. And I know this has been raised before, and those who who advocate maintaining the very open, bottom-up process have been alarmed that it would somehow constrain uh, the uh, essential character of the IGF if there were to be a managed process to to identify particular issues of focus. But I think it's still worth exploring. We made this point in our contribution to the uh, UN retreat uh, a couple of years ago, and we even suggested a modality for focusing down, uh, whereby the MAG and the Secretariat link with the key, uh, with the key centres of internet governance, if that's the right word, uh, such as ISOC, ICANN, and others, uh, and and try to define what the objective and overall impact of the IGF should be. Uh, and that process would be a very open one uh, that would uh, build on the inputs that have been made by stakeholders for workshops, but would manage the, the overall objective of the IGF. And that would enhance its ability to be um, characterized as uh, you know, this is what the I, uh, with a message like this is what the IGF is currently helping to resolve. That kind of messaging, I think, will be strengthened if there were that focus down uh, on issues. I also 
I'm very sympathetic to the view that we should leave space for emerging issues. I think this was a point that Jim made earlier. The, the internet and digital economy is a fast-moving area. Technology is rapidly advancing, AI, Internet of Things, and so on. So you need to allow some opportunity to for the IGF to remain agile so as to pick up uh, Im, uh, issues that are rapidly developing during the period in the preparation for the IGF. So we should allow that as well, that opportunity to to connect with what's happening so that the IGF doesn't miss the boat, if, if, uh, if you, you might say, uh, on, on a particular uh, rapidly evolving issue. So um, overall, I think we're very positive, we remain very positive about the IGF as, as an important mechanism. We're seeing other proposals for fora to discuss digital issues emerging, including within the UN. Uh, so we must safeguard the IGF's role, and to do that is to strengthen its, its uh, profile on, on key issues and increase its outreach uh, across, uh, across the world. Maintain it as a forum for discussion. I'm very, we are very, the UK government is very sympathetic to what uh, our colleague from Canada said earlier on. We, uh, it's not about turning this into a negotiating forum, but certainly crystallizing the essential uh, areas of broad understanding and direction through messaging, I think is very important. Uh, uh, objective to do and again that's uh, I think an important uh, innovation that Switzerland has introduced with the Geneva messages so support that um, I think I'll, s I'll stop there we had uh, in consultation with my colleagues who were in Geneva other comments but maybe I'll pick those up at a later opportunity rather than take too much time now I hope that's helpful thank you thank you Mark um, that was that was very helpful um, as all the comments have been, of course. Um, I just want to, the so far in the queue, we've had just participants who are here physically in the room. I really want to encourage those participants that are participating online um, to um, take the mic, ask for the mic as well. And I know um, Anya and other folks are encouraging the same. Um, next in the queue, we have Susan Chalmers. Susan. Thank you, Chair. Susan Chalmers. Uh, on behalf of the United States. Um, Lynn, congratulations on your reappointment as chair of the multi-stakeholder advisory group. Congratulations to all new MEG members attending in person and remotely. And thank you to the Swiss for having hosted a very successful IGF 2017. The United States recognizes the Internet Governance Forum as the premier global forum for multi-stakeholder dialogue on cross-cutting internet governance and policy issues. The IGF brings together stakeholders from all sectors to share ideas and exchange best practices and to build collaborative relationships to address areas of mutual interest. The value of the multi-stakeholder discussions that take place during the IGF depends in part upon the diversity of perspectives included. So to this end, we suggest that the MAG consider how to encourage more diverse participation at the IGF particularly from developing countries and from all stakeholder groups, but with a focus on governments as well as the private sector. In addition to this suggestion, we would also like to emphasize the importance of annou announcing the new composition of the MAG as early as possible following the conclusion of the previous IGF or even during the previous IGF. Doing so will better equip the IGF community to undertake its programmatic and improvements work for the next IGF. Finally, we would like to congratulate those groups, the DCs, the BPFs, the CENB, behind the various publications of intersessional work. Together with the Geneva messages, workshop reports, and other tangible outputs, the products of the IGF can be better compiled, communicated and disseminated to the internet community and to policymakers. These valuable resources can be made more visible. We suggest that the MEG should consider how best it can do that. Thank you for the opportunity to comment. Thank you, Susan. 
and building on your diversity comment, we've had a number of um, uh, interventions from the WIAG countries. I would encourage those of you from other regions to please um, take the floor, ask for the mic as well. Uh, next in the queue, we have Mike Nelson. I saw somewhere in the room. There you are. Mike, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Lynn. Uh, I'm speaking as Mike Nelson, a former MAG member. Uh, unfortunately, I was unable to be in Geneva, but I was a very active remote participant, just as I was for the IGF in Athens, the IGF in Hyderabad, and the IGF in, in Nairobi. Um, and over the years, I think remote participation has gotten better, and uh, I was very glad to be able to not only listen, but also speak in Geneva. Uh, I'm here wearing several hats. I'm a member of the technical community as a physicist, I'm a former government person. I'm currently working for Cloudflare in the private sector, and in my spare time, I'm an academic at Georgetown. I want to thank you, Lynn, for agreeing to continue on in your service, and thank you also, Changatai, and the team that makes all this happen. Uh, you do the work of a team that's three or four times larger, and you do it with a lot of humor and, and, and grace and spirit. Um, I just have a few comments. Uh, my most important comment regards the program and how we develop the agenda. Uh, I think a greater effort has to be made to make sure that every workshop brings something fresh and new, something that hasn't been done before. Uh, in my three years in the MAG, people got tired of hearing that, but I really worry that the pressure seems to be towards doing something safe doing something that everybody understands. And that's exactly the opposite of what we should be doing as the IGF. We should be finding things that most of the people in the room haven't heard about before, exploring debates that other groups have not been exploring. That's the unique role of this group. The other unique role of the IGF is to focus on things that pertain to the internet and to governance. One of my concerns over the last five years is that more and more proposals are being accepted that really don't pertain just to internet. Sometimes they're much broader uh, internet technology issues. Sometimes they don't have anything to do with governance. They're just a discussion of some of the interesting projects that are happening online, the kind of panel that would be much more likely to be at WISIS, which is in the other building here, and which is why I'm not able to spend more time in this session. So I'd urge you to try to keep to the, the unique role of looking at issues that are shaping the future of the internet, places where decisions are being made by the private sector, by governments, by standards bodies, and most of all, by users. Let's not just talk about the internet, let's talk about who is shaping the internet. I think that will enable us to get more people at the table. Uh, I've been disappointed to see that the private sector participation has not grown over the last five years, and that very few companies like Cloudflare, which only has 650 employees, are involved. You don't have a lot of startups involved. And unfortunately, I think too often we're missing the chance to, hit, to debate the big debates because we're playing it safe. We have so many different viewpoints here. Quite often, controversial issues are pushed to the side because a number of people don't want to talk about those issues. To fix that, I think we need to do something like Mark Carvel and others have mentioned. We need to pull away from the idea that we'll just compile all the good ideas that bubble up from the bottom up. I think we need a combination of sideways and bottom up. The mag can provide a framework from the side. It can, it can come in and say, these are the big issues, these are the topics we want to debate, not at the highest level that we do now, but a little more specific. Pick out those big debates that need to be addressed that haven't been addressed before, and then use the bottom-up process to decide who the best players, the best people to bring that to the table. And I'd urge you as you do that to stop focusing only on geographic and gender and ethnicity, diversity, but make sure you focus on diversity of point of view. There's nothing worse than a panel with eight people from all around the world all saying the same thing. 
I think the model that we see at the IGF USA, the model we see at Eurodig, is a good example of the sideways, then bottom-up uh, approach. And lastly, I want to propose a crazy idea, because those of you who know me <clears throat> know that's one of my specialties. And the crazy idea, I think, might be something we can do this year to immediately address the challenge we've been having finding a host. We have a host for next year. I think Germany will do a great job. But as I understand it, we're on plan C or plan D when it comes to finding a, a host for the meeting. So I want to propose plan E, which is to have a virtual distributed IGF. This is something that could be done very, very efficiently, very cheaply, and it would be brand new. It would be different. As I envision it, it might only be two days long, but it would run straight for 48 hours around the globe. You might have 15, 20 different locations, each contributing a few hours of content, all projecting the webcasts online. This would be new. It would be exciting. It would bring in much higher level participants and many more participants who then probably would be more likely to go to Germany in 2019 and uh, future IGFs. We have some models. Internet Society has done the Inner Community Global Meeting with more than 12 different places. Uh, you could go beyond their simple, their, their, their approach, which was one meeting at a time and do parallel tracks so we could cover more topics. If you did this, I'm sure that Google Hangout, Zoom, Skype, Facebook would all compete and probably agree to pay for the whole process. And it would be a, a, a showcase of the technology we're all talking about. The most important part about this would be that you'd have a hallway zone. So people wouldn't miss out on the opportunities to talk to each other. There'd be a chance to do one-on-one, face-to-face, virtual conversations. The only thing missing will be the hors d'oeuvres and the coffee. But maybe even that's possible at the different hubs around the world. We've got the structure to do this. We've done hubs before. We've got more than 50 different regional and, local and uh, national IGFs that could be the, the core of this, of this structure. So let's think about it. Let's look at w ways we might be able to make it happen because we're running out of time to find a real physical host. If we don't do something new, I really worry that the IGF is not going to be the, the exciting place it has been. Uh, I worry a little bit it could become like the Internet Society's INET conferences, which 25 years ago were the place to go for the Internet. If you cared about the Internet, you went to the INET conferences, and 2,000 people showed up even when there were only uh, half a million people using the Internet. But because they tried to cover too much, and because they tended, after, over the years, they started covering the same territory, people set up other meetings that went deeper and more focused, and they lost the momentum. So let's make sure the IGF continues, completes its 10-year mandate, and again, thank you to all of you on the MAG for being part of this process. It's never been more important. There have never been more de big debates that need to be discussed. And I, th I look forward to helping anyone and everyone who wants to think about ways we can keep the IGF fresh and exciting. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Um, and just in response to your last idea, in fact, that's uh, Plan C. Um, plan A and Plan B I covered um, earlier in the opening remarks. Um, we have had discussions within the Secretariat about, um, I think probably defaulting back to would be the appropriate words, a um, online conference. Um, that certainly is a possibility if we're not able to, to agree uh, another strategy. And again, we're hoping to um, pull the trigger on that decision um, by late March or early April. Um, we have two more people in the queue at the moment um, for this particular topic, which again, was a part of the Secretariat's readout of the various taking stock activities. And this section in particular was meant to focus on the various kind of program components, the main theme, the sub-themes, um, the session types, including the new and innovative sessions, and the schedule. Um, if you want to comment on those particular topics, I would suggest you should um, indicate so um, soon. 
If not, I think we'll ask the um, Secretariat to come back to the next part of the stock taking, which would focus on comments on day zero, logistics, lessons learned, suggestions for improvement, um, those sorts of areas. So that was just a heads up. Um, next in the queue, we have Marcus Coomer. Marcus, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn, and uh, also congratulations to your re-election and welcome to all the new MAG members. I'm speaking in my personal capacity as someone who was involved in some of the intercessional activities, but before going into that, I would definitely support a virtual meeting of 2018. I think that would be quite exciting. Uh, let me go to the intercessional activities. It is essentially a success story for the past years. We have the Connecting and Enabling the Next Billion, we have the Best Practice Forums, but also the NRIs and the Dynamic Coalitions as really substantive intercessional activities. But actually, when taking stock with uh, all of them, it was involved with the Dynamic Coalitions and with the Best Practice Forum on Cybersecurity, and we felt they had developed a bit in silos. There was not enough interaction between them, and there would have been some interest, let's say, the Dynamic Coalition of Internet of Things, being involved in discussions on cybersecurity, but they just didn't know about each other. We have discussed this, and there are moves on the way of establishing a common calendar to make it easier to know what happens where, but I think there's, again, the calls for uh, a role, an active role of the MAG to ensure coherence of the program is very welcome. This is an important part that each component of the program actually know what the others do and there's a tremendous potential for cross-fertilization between the different activities uh, that are taking place. So this is, a, I think, an area where improvements can be achieved relatively easy just by making the information available and inviting also people to be part of the various activities. We have tried, for instance, involving the NRIs in this or in that, but we never had proactive calls with them where we actually had a discussion, bring them in and see how we can involve them uh, closer in these activities. And I would also echo some of the comments made during uh, this morning uh, to caution against too rigid uh, linkages with SDGs and UN uh, programs. And there is indeed a need for flexibility for the IGF to be able to address new and emerging issues as they come up. And we would lose that if we are linked too closely uh, to uh, SDGs, however important uh, they are. So this is something, an important uh, component to maintain. And lastly, I think Mark mentioned that some of the comments made were made right since the beginning of the IGF, that they are, the work, uh, the program is too rich, uh, the, too many speakers, too many panelists, and we said that for, right from the first meeting, uh, there should never be, we don't want to see these panels of 10 or more people. And now we don't have panels anymore, but we have uh, town hall sessions when we have 20 people. So <laughs> it's, the names have changed, but the problem seems to be the same. And I think uh, the calls made for more streamlining remain uh, as relevant uh, as ever. And there again, I think, is a role for the MAG. And the comments also made uh, by uh, Mike Nelson just now, that diversity of viewpoints quite often get overlooked. And that's, uh, I think, more important than uh, geographical diversity, that we really bring the diversity of viewpoints to the fore. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Um, Israel, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. This is Israel Rosas from Mexico, for the record. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you, uh, as well as the incoming and returning MAC members for their appointment. Uh, I also want to thank the Swiss government and the IEF Secretariat for the great IEF 2017 meeting. And about the IEF improvements, I support the idea of build on existing efforts, as well as the, as the new ones. 
like the Geneva messages and the interactive approach taken by the Swiss government during during the sessions. And of course, I'll be in favor of, of advancing on improvements to the IEF as suggested by, by Internet Society by, by Raquel. Thank you. Thank you, Israel. Andrea, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Because it was mentioned twice, I have to make a comment. I'll make it short and I will be more elaborate in the logistics part. Remote participation is a nightmare for persons who are blind and we had a very bad experience. I was gonna talk about this later, but remote participation as it is now, and that was one of my big bug bugaboos, and Changi Tai knows this, uh, it's not accessible for persons with disabilities. And also, I just, being dyslexic, I just had a dickens of a time trying to learn how to get on to do, to get my name on the queue. And if it hadn't been for Marcus sort of saying, hey, put here, you do here, and you do that, I would not be able to see my name up there. So just to be brief, to point that out, with all due respect, for persons with disabilities, remote doesn't always work, and it should work, because it would be fabulous because not all persons with disabilities can travel to be here with us. Thank you. No, thank, thank you, Andrea. And in, we had a MAG orientation session yesterday for the uh, incoming MAG members. And one of the things that was um, sort of put forward there and had a lot of support, but of course there's no formal standing as the MAG hasn't yet met um, in full plenary, was in fact to support a working group on um, accessibility, um, given some of the discussions that came up out of the last last IGF, so um, that will fit in there nicely. Thank you. Um, we next we have um, Mary. Mary, you have the floor. Hello. Okay. My name is Mary Duma for the records, and uh, I just want to intervene based on the, the growing support for uh, virtual, virtual meeting. Um, I'm, sp I'm speaking from my own um, environment that we have challenges with infrastructure and it will be difficult for some of us from least developed countries in uh, Africa in particular. In mine, uh, we, we try the remote participation from, you know, when we do our regional IGFs and we find out that people are not following. So in, in, in moving forward, on this or supporting this, I think people should consider the fact that not all the regions of the of the world has fantastic infrastructure to go on. We we tried. We, I was at the at the at the ISOC um, virtual meeting, and um, I'm not sure my 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 hope was even taken. We were not following. We couldn't reach others, and I don't know whether others were reaching. The, the hub we used because we have infrastructure challenges and it will be a big challenge and disadvantage for those of us that are in that environment. Thank you. I just wanted to intervene on that. Though you said I should just be listening, but I needed to raise this. Thank you. Mary's referring to the fact that she's an incoming MAG member, and again, we encourage incoming MAG members to listen to the community, but that doesn't mean no, <laughs> no, no interaction, and those were, were very important points. Um, we now have in the queue Mark Chacon. Mark, you have the floor. Thank you. And thank uh, you for using the queue as a new participant here. Yeah, I can't, I can't, um, I'm excited I actually figured it out. Um, <laughs> But thank you. <laughs> my my name is Mark Chacon. I'm, I'm with the uh, executive office of the of the Secretary General in uh, in New York. Um, I'm primarily in a in a listening mode. We the Secretary General and, and his office certainly want to strengthen the links with with the MAG and with the IGF, and and that starts by by being here and listening to to these discussions, listening to your ideas, your suggestions, your your concerns. Um, the, the, as I said, the Secretary General certainly wants to increase his engagement with, with the MAG and with the IGF, um, and really t to have the MAG and the IGF discussions inform his own views, his own advocacy, and his own initiatives. 
a few of you have alluded to that. Uh, other pro I've heard you know some of you talk about other proposals within the UN. He's certainly contemplating a number of very concrete initiatives to to support these discussions, to support the IGF, and to support international cooperation in general on uh, on internet governance issues. But he's certainly looking uh, at the IGF as a as a mechanism really to inform his uh, his own engagement. Uh, some of you may have noticed that he has stepped up his engagement on these issues. He's talked about them uh, in a number of different fora. The, it's also one of the priorities that he listed to the in front of the General General Assembly. So we're certainly talking to the the, the MAG and the, the IGF Secretary to see how we can increase our, our collaboration, but certainly um, learn from from you and from the, all the the expertise. And on a on a related note, we'll also be looking at uh, tightening and cleaning up the way the the mag nominations are, are done and making sure they're done earlier, so that you don't lose three months uh, each time to get uh, to get to the important work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank thank you, Mark. And I'm very pleased to have you here as well. There's nothing like participation and uh, to really understand sort of both the value and, and the workings of a lot of these multi forums, which on the surface may seem fairly straightforward, but have their own set of complexities and, and nuances and, and richness. So I'm um, very glad you're here. Before we close this portion out and move to another section of the um, stock taking exercise. Are there any um, final requests from the floor or are there any online participants that want to come in? <coughs> so doing the um, slow count to six um, and seeing no um, further requests. Um, we'll revert back to Changatai from the Secretariat to pick up on the stock taking um, report out um, for another set of activities, and then um, again we'll open up the floor for questions. Changatai. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, the next session is um, 2C comments on day zero logistics of IGF 2017, lessons learned, and suggestions for improvement. Uh, to summarize, uh, day zero continues to be seen as a valuable component of the IGF week, and many called for it to be retained as is. While noting its informality, it was said Day Zero still includes important substantive discussions relevant to overall IGF and IG debate. It was suggested, however, that to the extent possible, the premises for Day Zero should be the same as the ones where the rest of the IGF is taking place. Many appreciated the venue for the IGF, the UN offices at Geneva, UNOG, noting the Wi-Fi and audiovisual facilities were excellent. Meeting rooms were spacious and well-equipped and generally worked well for all sessions. Bilateral meeting rooms were also said to, be, to have been of good quality. It was noted, nevertheless, that given the importance of these kinds of exchanges at IGF meetings, more bilateral meeting rooms should be set aside in the future venue. It was also said that especially when a venue is large and complex, having a high number of volunteers posted inside would be helpful. This would be both useful for orienting participants as well as assisting participants with disabilities. In general, it was also emphasized that more should be done to ensure the venue is more accessibility friendly and that guidelines provided by the Dynamic Coalition on Accessibility and Disability, the DCAD, on which the IGF has increasingly relied, should be more closely followed. That's the end of the summary. Thank you, Chagatai, and thank you, Andrea. Is there anybody who wants to come in and comment on those particular aspects? Sorry, Andrea? Mm -hmm. I don't want to take too much time because I've, I've taken the floor, I think, quite a bit. I think one of the main things is that I've always appreciated Chengi Tai for recognizing the problem, but we still haven't managed to solve it. And it does, we're going to revamp 
that guideline and make it more specific. And I have threatened to come and meet with him, but both of us have ridiculous schedules and we've never been able to kind of do it. Oh, he says, yes, come, and I go, okay, and I can't manage. But the thing is, I would like people in this room to consider and make a contribution to what they think, what they observe, because it can't just be down to the dynamic coalition and to me. All of you know something. And what did you notice? What did you think could be better? Because there's logistics and how we get there. There's the captioning, thanks to Marcus. He was the first person to do captioning in Geneva. We finally established that. And that has made up, we had a bit of a war deciding who did what first, but he was correct. And also, we haven't really attempted something else, sign language interpretation. And that's another pit. So I want to get the information from people here in this room, and we don't have many people coming who are persons with disabilities because of the impediments. So we really need to do something about getting them in to IGF as well. And I'm, I'm a one-man band a lot of the time. So thank you for letting me say that. And thank you, Chang'e Dai, for making that the last thing you said. <laughs> and hopefully we can help the one-man band thing as well with uh, you know, perhaps constituting a working group within the MAG to actually address that as well. Um, um, Ji, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Regarding the uh, arrangement of day zero, uh, this uh, last year I uh, happened to participate uh, in a couple of sessions uh, of the meetings on, on day zero. And I found that uh, um, some themes or topics are very important and are very value, valuable. For example, protection of youth. How do the parents and the society, you know, manage, you know, the access to internet, you know, by the kids? Um, how, how do we heal them from, you know, the addiction to, to internet, forgetting about their homework, etc. Uh, this is a very important, a very, very valuable uh, exercise. But uh, I found that uh, you know, in the in, in a meeting room as big as that, this one, you know, it's really sparse, sparsely populated, and the participants, the number of participants is very small. And I hope that uh, in the future, such you know, waste of time and. Uh, and financial you know, resources can be avoided. Okay, we should follow up on your last point offline, I think, because this is a community consultation leading up to a, a working group of the, of the MAG. Um, so I, you know, it's not meant to be a, a particular forum that draws in 2,000 people um, with respect to the MAG, but uh, certainly the MAG was a facility to help pull in comments from the community, but I'd, I'd like to follow up on some of your other points offline, make sure I understand them. Um, at the moment in the queue, we have uh, Jim Pendergrass, Marilyn Cade, and then Michael um, will come to you as well. So Jim, you have the floor. Yes, uh, th thank you, Chair. Uh, Jim Prendergast for the record. Um, digging into the logistics a little bit, um, I think timing of the, the past IGF conference where it fell on the calendar had an impact on attendance. I know anecdotally a lot of folks pumping right up against the holidays just weren't able to make it. They had family vacations. They had, you know, that's a tough time of the year to be doing something. Um, so I think we need to look at, you know, the calendar itself across all the IG events and everything else is crowded as it is. But I do think step back, we do need to look at trying to avoid those year end holidays, uh, national holidays, et cetera, that just take a lot of people out of play. Um, I thought the security arrangements in Mexico were fantastic. A huge improvement over previous IGFs. Um, right in, boom, boom, boom. I heard stories of people standing out in the snow for an hour to get into the venue this go around. Um, it's unfortunate. I think we need to do ways to avoid that and look at ways to avoid that in the future. Um, I know here is resource constrained, but there's really no reason for that uh, to be happening. Um, one of the things I noticed with the scheduling this year was um, it seemed like some of the sessions were staggered and starting at different times, which did create, I think, more conflicts than we've seen in the past. 
and I'm not quite sure if that was whether it was the room layouts or it was trying to squeeze in more sessions or if it was um, you know allowing for the flash sessions that didn't necessarily not line up with the 90 minute blocks that we're used to but going forward you know starting a session at 10 20 versus 10 o'clock that did create more conflicts than I felt as though we had seen in the past so that may be something we want to revisit um, the remote participation I, I I wasn't remote participating. I was fortunate to be in Geneva, but the folks that I do know who were participating remotely had serious challenges. And I don't remember it being that bad in the past. I don't know if, I heard that we were using three different systems to ena enable um, remote participation, an audio stream, a separate video stream, and then a, a, another scribe feed of some sort. We, we just have to do a much better job of that. Um, and, I, and I think that it's not only inconveniencing to those who are trying to participate, it helps or it hurts actually when we're trying to gather the record of what happened with the recordings and with the audio and with the scribe feeds for the, the record of outputs that we need going forward. Um, on day zero, I, I still personally, I continue to struggle with um, what day zero is. Um, I, I know it's controlled by the country but it's starting to look and feel a lot more like a another day of the IGF. Um, and one of the things that I, you know, I see from that is we see workshops that attempted to become part of the day one through four program are not successful, they're not chosen, yet they show up on day zero. In fact, some workshops that finished in the bottom 10 in the rankings. So I don't know, I don't think that's what the goal of day zero is nor do I think that's what it should be. But if it is, and that's what the MAG decides, then it has to be resourced appropriately so that there is remote participation, there is scribe feed capture, et cetera, to continue to build the record of outputs and outcomes. Um, I guess the only other thing I would just add is, you know, as a person who's been to several of these consultations in the past, is maybe um, some more advice for the, the MAG going forward as they look at these things. I think, um, Everybody in this room agrees that it's unfortunate that we have another late start to the naming of the MAG, and as was mentioned, we lost three months worth of work. Um, try and avoid becoming just meeting planners and try and be more strategic and long-term in your outlook. I know that's gonna be a challenge this year with the compressed schedule, but there are some trends and there are some things I think the, the MAG does need to address. Um, you know, figure out how to change these things. How can, you, how can we continue to improve participation from governments? I think everybody agrees that's a key goal. Um, we're seeing struggles with private sector participation. I know the, the folks that I work with are trying to you know, come up with new ideas, but I think the MAG could you know, also add some answers to that, as well as participation from the global south and uh, developing countries. How do we, you know, as I mentioned earlier, how do we do a better job mar marketing the outcomes of the IGF to those who want them and those who may not be aware of them? And then you know, the funding issue. Um, you know, how do we find more diverse and stable streams of funding for the IGF? I think that's important. Having a stable financial footing is key to the long-term success of the IGF. And how do we make it more equitable amongst all shareholders? I know uh, there are certain segments of the, of the community that are really stepping up and others are not. So how do we sort of distribute that a little more evenly? And then finally, um, be aspirational, but also be practical. Um, you know, don't lose sight of what the mandate of the IGF is, because I think that's very important. Um, but at the same time, you know, keep coming up with the big ideas, and um, I, you know, we'll find out if we have the funds to make them happen. Uh, hopefully, that issue takes care of itself over the short term, so that some of those big ideas that people are so keen to come up with in this group uh, can be implemented someday. Thanks. Thank you, Jim, for another complete set of activities. I'm going to turn to Chengatai in a moment to talk a little bit about day zero because I think there's one or two misunderstandings there that we should just, just sort of correct now. Um, and also take the opportunity to point out that at two o'clock today in this room, there is a don donors meeting. Armin Plum from UNDESA is actually going to share the current state of, of um, funding um, and also sort of budget state as well. So I announce that now so you can rearrange your lunch plans to be here. Um, and if not, of course, we can certainly make sure you understand the um, output of that discussion later. But Chengatai on day zero. Uh, thank you, Lynn. Yes, um, day zero is not controlled by the um, 
host country, so to speak. Uh, we do have the high-level session in previous IGFs, so that was an activity for the host country. The rest of the activities on day zero, um, these are activities that do not quite fit into the schedule and do not quite adhere, let's say, to the um, IGF standards of, you know, complete multi-stakeholderism, etc. For for instance, um, on day zero we have um, the GigaNet uh, meeting, which is the meeting for academics, which goes on for the whole day. And um, I attended a small island state meeting as well, just for the small island states. So we have those types of activities that are important, but do not quite fit into the IGF schedule. And um, activities in day zero are not part of the official record of the IGF annual meetings. So I hope that cl cl clarifies it a little bit. I think that clarifies what it is. I think Jim's other points with respect to the MAG really determining what day zero activities are and how they both support and fit in with the program is still a, an open point to be taken up with the, the MAG. Just wanted to correct the, the responsibility, if you will. Uh, next in the queue, I believe, was Marilyn Cade. Marilyn, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Marilyn Cade speaking. I especially appreciate the um, opportunity to uh, speak now because, in fact, my comments are going to be largely focused on the benefit of Day Zero and its function in um, overall in supporting the, um, commun the broader community's interest in having the opportunity to convene on Day Zero in self-organized activities, many of which are informational or educational, but also to note on day zero that many of the groups that, um, like um, a group that's organized a main session or organized a panel, have in the past taken the opportunity to use a room on the in the afternoon of day zero to improve their coordination and their planning. NRIs have used the opportunity to convene their own community, again, in a preparatory session because they all happen to be in the same place. I'm a big fan of Day Zero because of its flexibility. I will make a comment, though, that venue, 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 and I'm sorry that G had to leave, but I'll approach him uh, privately. The, the venue that was used for Day Zero, and I too urge that we have the Day Zero event um, whenever possible, geographically located at the same place, the good news is that we were not far away. But the meeting rooms in CICG happen to come in big sizes or very small sizes. They just It just happens that way. Um, I did a session on Day Zero, uh, co-organized with others who are here in the room, focusing on um, social, cultural, and religious barriers to access for women to ICTs for the purpose of economic uh, growth. That was not a workshop subject, and it was a formative event that wouldn't have fit in to the um, agenda of the four days at all, but it was taking advantage of the fact that there were about 30 to 35 women and other experts, and I see one of the women who participated, Mary, here in the room. So I think when people start questioning the day zero, I think it's important to look at the value of it. And then secondly, I will raise a very strong objection to the MAG taking oversight of day zero. Frankly, I think you have enough on your plate to plan a four-day program and to deal with all the challenges that you're being confronted with, like being more strategic, looking ahead to new issues, and taking on the responsibility of governing day zero will be a diversion, I think, from your, uh, from your, your overall task. On the logistics, um, Jorge and Thomas and others from the Swiss government were aware that I was very challenging to them privately about the logistics of the um, registration process, um, the badging process, because of my deep experience or long experience in going to the Palais. However, although we had a few stumbles, I think overall we had a very effective session. Um, 
the venue is very challenging for persons with disabilities and for people who are old like me. But it is also a venue that has historical value. And I think perhaps we also want to remember that it was the United Nations building that we met in and to remember that that brought some value added to us in many, many ways. Finally, I'm just going to make a comment about <clears throat> um, having the opportunity to have um, more flexible access to bilateral rooms if it's possible in the next venue to um, maybe dedicate a even an, a kind of an online sign-up approach so that um, small groups or even two or three people who find that they have something they need to discuss or an opportunity to meet with a minister or a deputy minister, um, maybe we can, the MAG can look ahead at, you know, whether those kinds of more ad hoc um, scheduling can be built into the session for next year. Thank you, Marilyn. Mark, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, Lynn. Mark of our UK government. Um, about uh, day zero, um, I think there is a perception problem here about what it is. Um, and I note what you say, Lynn, about uh, the MAG looking at this, uh, you know, the, how the day is assembled and so on. Um, looking at the, uh, the program for day zero in Geneva, it's a very rich uh, set of sessions um, and so it's not to be overlooked and it, I, I was saying to colleagues that's a part of the IGF program uh, day zero is perhaps a misnomer and I remember Nigel Hickson saying zero god that sounds like nothing <laughs> maybe you ought to uh, rename it <laughs> um, give it another name and uh, the other problem is and, uh, and uh, Chengitai is right. Originally, it was the opportunity for the host host uh, government to convene meetings for ministers, uh, primarily, but also leading leading uh, uh, people in the internet world. And uh, I remember several very very good sessions where my minister was was involved on on the day zero. And and. In those days, the minister also had an opportunity to take uh, the IGF stage on the opening day. Um, so, uh, uh, for attracting government, and it's picking up really on, I think, what uh, Marilyn had just said, picking up on you know how critical it is actually to get some ministers to come to the IGF. You've got to give them something, uh, a, a platform, something for them uh to be involved in and to speak at they want to talk about their policies but they want to talk about it within a un a rare opportunity outside the un itself in new york uh to be able to do that with a with a focus on uh, icts and digitals with a global stakeholder community in the audience of course in geneva for very valid reasons uh the opportunity for ministers to have their five minute slot was cut and so when I went to my minister, Matt Hancock, uh, who was all fired up after the G7 and uh, said, oh, I've got a, you know, hopefully a UN opportunity here with the IGF. I said, well, actually, there's no opportunity in the IGF program for you to speak. And ultimately, he said, oh, I can't, uh, I'm not going. Uh, it's difficult for, for ministers to get approval, especially with our government, with a very tight situation in parliament, to travel. Uh, when there isn't the opportunity to speak. So I wonder if uh, we could go back to um, day zero, if that's uh, for uh, rename it in some way, uh, other than that, as providing that opportunity for, for government ministers, uh, perhaps in consultation with the host government, and allow time for that. Um, otherwise, I think the incentives for ministers to attend the IGF is now much reduced and I'm not against the decision that was taken in Geneva about the opening day and uh, session I'm not against that but I'm just talking reality really in terms of politicians government ministers what opportunity 
uh, what is the value for them uh, and for us to convince our government whips to allow uh, the minister to attend if there is no opportunity actually to be on a platform, if you like, in some way. Thank you. No, thank, thank you, Mark. I think the last point you raise is very important and, of course, ties into the, the desire from the IGF community to have more higher level um, government participation. I just want to clarify one thing you said at the beginning. I wasn't suggesting that the MAG take oversight responsibility for day zero, just that the MAG needs to have a discussion on the day zero set of activities. And I think you, um, you know, elucidated some of those um, reasons for the discussion quite well. Um, I need to go to Michael, um, and I'm sorry, Michael, I did a really poor job of integrating the offline queue with the online queue. Um, I think you should, probably should have spoken a, a couple of participants ago, but you have the floor now, and then we'll come back to the online queue. Uh, good afternoon, and good afternoon to Chengita and the Secretary, uh, our MAC Chair. Congratulations for your re-election. On matters concerning the Day Zero, I find Day Zero to be one of the high interactive day, one of the days, of course, it's not crowded, and there's less of the politics that we see during the main IGF sessions. So basically, uh, day zero should be maintained because at the end of the day, it brings out certain groups of people who may not find space or whose agendas may not actually fit with the main session and the theme of that year's IGF. Uh, during, during last year's IGF, I think the zero was held at CICG. There was a session for the youths. I think it was sponsored by ISOC. During that session, I saw how youths could interact easily amongst themselves. I could hear the voice of the youth coming with a greater meaning. Of course, getting the youth to the main sessions where you'd find a diverse group of people, some youths are somehow intimidated. They cannot actually express themselves in the manner they would express themselves when their spaces is somehow protected on day zero. So basically day zero, in my view as a MAG member, should be maintained because it somehow is, gives a platform to the voices whose concerns might not be given space during the main sessions. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Michael. Um, coming back to the online queue, Rasha, you have the floor. And again, if people could give their stakeholder group and organization, if and as appropriate. Well, it's always appropriate, just from whichever hat you might be speaking from. <laughs> it's the little face with a Microphone bars. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, uh, my name is Rasha Abdullah. I'm um, a MAG member representing civic society in Africa. This is my third year on the MAG. And I'm still not sure what day zero is all about. <laughs> uh, and I'm afraid Shangitai's clarification confused me even more. <laughs> um, my first year on the MAG, I wasn't sure what to expect. The last year, people started, uh, some uh, NGOs started emailing me saying, should we fund our participants for day zero? Is it important? And I said, yes, I, f I feel it's a, a day of the mag. Um, the other point that Shangitai mentioned actually about Gegenat is a lot of the schools, I'm, I'm a professor at the American University in Cairo, and a lot of the schools, mine included, would not fund me for day zero. They would only fund me for the for the official days of the conference. So my suggestion, and uh, I'm glad there's probably going to be a discussion about this later, but my suggestion is to cancel day zero or rename it or whatever, and just maybe have it as the second half of day one, uh, and and move all that because also that really makes the IJ five days, and it just it's it makes everybody uh, very tired <laughs> by the end of the conference. And it makes it pretty expensive to attend, uh, especially if, like last year, it was in a place like Geneva or something. So it's, there's a cost issue involved, and there is uh, a fatigue issue involved as well. Um, so just something to consider. Thank you. Thank you, Rasha. Omar, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, and also congratulations for 
reappointment as uh, MAC chair and welcome to all uh, new MAC members. I look forward to working together uh, through the year. Um, also, congratulations to the Secretariat in the MAC for a very successful IGF 2017. Um, there has been, or there were, uh, um, quite a few issues. Um, number one, it was related to access, especially for the uh, uh, for the people who were exhibiting. Uh, my company, Technician, uh, was um, uh, we had a boot and we had quite a number of uh, print material. It was a long distance for us to carry all those material. I had to find like five people to help me, you know, carry those material to the uh, to the exhibitor uh, place. Um, I did not understand um, the fact that government participants were allowed to access uh, through the front gate and non-government through the back gate. Um, that was like quite. Um, a challenge for us because you know we had to walk all the way to the back gate and uh, access the place and the first day uh, when we arrived there were some confusions about where the registration would be done we were guided through a different place and there was no one and then finally we found out it's up uh, on the you know on the hill um, and then we had to call Anya and a few other people to <laughs> sort that out. Uh, there might have been issues, you know, on our end, but uh, uh, probably it wasn't clearly communicated on the, um, you know, Google Maps and others. So in the future, if uh, um, that's uh, improved, it would really help. Um, the participants in general, especially the, the ones who are participating for the first time. I've been coming to Geneva for MAG meetings and other meetings. Um, I know what is where, uh, but still it was a challenge. But it will be more challenge for the newcomers. Um, also, uh, uh, one of our con continued problem, uh, I'm speaking this on behalf of the um, IGF Afghanistan, where I also belong, and uh, people who are coming from uh, that region. Um, that's the visa issue, and I personally uh, been having this issue. Now I know how to, um, you know, p get visas, you know, and which place. And uh, my friends were joking with me that you should write a book uh, titled uh, "How to Get uh, Get a Visa Fast 101." <laughs> but a lot of people. Uh, from Afghanistan, Pakistan, and the mm, wider uh, Central Asia and South Asia are having a huge challenge. It's easy for uh, India and Pakistan because they have embassies, the consulates in their countries. For Afghanistan, we have to travel uh, to Pakistan uh, because that's the embassy that deals with Afghanistan. And each time you travel to Pakistan, you spend between 500 to a thousand dollars, and you have to wait there uh, 14 days to, you know, get the approval. Or you can get your passport, uh, go home, and take another trip. So that has been an issue. Last year, uh, uh, for IGF uh, 2017, we uh, built a delegation of 10 people, including government, civil society, private sector, technical community, to come to Geneva. But unfortunately, five of them uh, were not able to get visa. One of them being an ex-deputy um, um, minister of the Ministry of Communications in IT. Two, uh, one private sector, one civil society. Two of them personally traveled to Islamabad, spent 14 days waiting for their visas, and at the end they got nothing, and they had to come back home. I reported this to the uh, Secretariat and our colleagues in Geneva who tried also very hard to make that possible, but it did not happen. Two of our colleagues were coming from London, but the embassy in Islamabad denied um, authorizing the Swiss embassy in London to issue visas for the people, for the Afghans who were traveling to uh, Geneva. 
so we had to come back again, talk to Shangatai and colleagues here um, who intervened, and luckily that was resolved. But the embassy in Islamabad that's also responsible for Afghanistan is really hard. You know, it's, um, it's really difficult to uh, get authorizations. I don't see the reasons why they're uh, not authorizing other embassies. For example, if you're in India and you can process your visa application there. Madam Chair, Switzerland does not only it's it's not only a land of Swiss it's a home for the uh, also a home for the nations and the nations need to be treated with respect when it comes to uh, and they should be given the opportunity to come here um, learn and share experiences and go back home you know with new ideas to enhance and contribute to their uh, communities and also, they should be given the opportunity to find partners, find collaborators, and uh, work together to make this, uh, this world a better place for all of us. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Omar. And of course, we're always just very, very sorry to hear about the problems for people <coughs> trying to um, get visas to participate. And you know, it's difficult to even understand just how difficult some of those processes are. If we move next to the queue, Wisdom, you yeah, have the floor. Thank you, Chair, and congratulations to your appointment and to the Chair. And congratulations also to the returning and the new MAG members. Uh, last year's IGF, I co-organized uh, two main sessions. Uh, uh, one on local intervention, global impact, and then how can international multi-stakeholder cooperation address uh, international disruption, encryption, and data flows. And then the other one was um, uh, uh, data roadmaps. And uh, moving forward, uh, we try to reach out to uh, some governments to actually consider taking part in some of these uh, main sessions. But the concerns that uh, some of them were bringing up uh, was uh, it looks like they are being left out. They don't have, uh, let's say, a particular session that they can actually recognize uh, uh, as being part of the IGF. Um, I remember one of the instances I was discussing with one government official who was at the last year's uh, IGF. And then he was thinking if IGF can come out with maybe one main session or whatever name that we call it, uh, so that that session can invite all government officials, uh, including all government officials uh, in the world, so they can come and then uh, discuss about some of these issues and as well as uh, interact with the audience uh, who are coming from the other part of the world uh, uh, moving forward the IGF uh, agenda. So I'm thinking this year if we can uh, come up with one main session uh, for officials so that they come and then whatever agenda that they have or whatever policy implementation that they are uh, implementing in their various country, they can come and discuss all those things and as well as uh, learn from others uh, moving forward. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Wisdom. Marilia, you're in the queue. Are you on the floor? Thank you. Marilia Maciel speaking on my personal capacity again. I just would like to make a comment on on day zero. Day zero, I think it changed uh, a lot over the years to a point that it's uh, almost irrecognizable for those that participated in the discussions and that created uh, day zero. And that created a lot of confusion with regards to what day zero is for and whether we should finance and, and come here one day earlier. And I think it also created another problem. Back when day zero was a space for governments to, to hold their meetings and there were a few meetings going on such as GigaNet, it also gave us the opportunity to get together in caucuses. 
And this year, what happened is that Cox has created a fictitious day minus one before day zero. So uh, we at Diplo, we hosted a civil society meeting that happened in day minus one. We just add another day to the time that people need to travel and to finance their stay elsewhere. And this is becoming really hard for stakeholders that have uh, less resources to participate in the IGF. The IGF is really becoming very, very long, and I don't think that this is uh, very sustainable. Another thing that is concerning me about Day Zero is that I think it's draining energy from the organization of workshops. There are a lot of excellent sessions organized on Day Zero. Day Zero is probably my favorite day in the IGF because it's so high quality, and because organizations have three days on the slot, three hours on the slot, a slot to organize their sessions, they really pay a lot of attention to the speakers to the themes, they try to be innovative, but this should be done in the workshops. And I think that perhaps this energy is being taken in the workshops uh, to day zero. And day zero is so substantive and it's not documented today, which is also a shame. So I am in super in favor of day zero. I think that day zero contributes a lot to the debate, but I join voices with others that said that MAG needs to rethink day zero. If it's a day on the program, that let's make it a day on the program and document it and make sure that really we invite people to participate. If it's not a day on the program, and I think that it's a viable option as well, then perhaps day zero doesn't need to be the same every year. We can have one year day zero as an outreach day, another day a platform for youth, which is an extremely good idea. Uh, another day, another year, uh, day zero could be a moment to unite uh, governments and, and hold high level meetings. So day zero could be flexible and not the same from year to year. This is something we, we should think about. Um, the only thing is that today I think day zero is confusing. It's not clear for those who wish to attend the IGF, it's diverting energy and it's not documented. And I think that this is not the ideal uh, situation, so we should think about it. Thank you, Marilia. Let me see if Chengatai wants to comment on anything. If not, I mean, clearly this is a, a topic in front of the MAG. I would actually say a lot of the comments we've just heard about Day Zero would apply to open forums as well, which I actually notice haven't been called out specifically here. But certainly in past MAG meetings, we've had some of the same discussions with respect to open forums. And last year, we took um, we changed the processes slightly so that the MAG was informed of the activities that were going forward in um, open forums, and I think day zero, although I'm not entirely sure of that. Um, more so that if there was a, a serious concern or a significant objection, we actually had the ability to speak to the Secretariat about that. What we actually did um, in one of the working groups this past year, uh, the working group for multi-year strategic work programs, we built a components document to talk about all the various pieces that make up an IGF annual meeting, plus all the intersessional activities, and tried to show the relationship between them. That was specifically to make clear what the current um, set of practices were regarding all those component pieces. Um, so it is not a, a recommendation, it's not cast in stone, it simply tried to capture um, the current state because in, in fact we saw last year there was a significant amount of confusion in terms of what the various roles were and what were all the component pieces of, of an IGF program. I think that's um, clearly um, a piece of work that the MAG will need to pick up going forward. And, and I've now apparently triggered Chengatai <laughs> into wanting to say something, which is always excellent. <laughs> Nice one. I just wanted to say that um, I hear you on what you say on day zero. Um, day zero. We also thought, that, I mean, I'm speaking for the Secretariat here, that day zero was just a service to the community. We have these rooms. They're supposed to be ready a day before the meeting, and they're empty. So why not have them being used by the community for other sessions which do not make it into the uh, main schedule? And it's also a testing day for us because we don't guarantee anything on day zero, but it's a testing to make sure that webcasting is working and um, the, the remote participation is working as well. I mean, but it's really up to the community through, through the MAG. If we, if we want to do without day zero, that's fine. Um, my only concern is that we should cap the costs of holding an IGF meeting. Um, 
as has been noted here, I think every single year the costs and the services increase and increase, and that might also be one of the reasons why we're in a certain, um, uh, I'm not sure what kind of word to use, but uh, we're having several challenges. So I think it would also be a good to make a commitment to let's not expand it too much, but let's just cap it as it is or even reduce it a little bit, the costs of holding the IGF meetings. Thank you, Changatai. I'm going to call Adam Peek to the floor in a moment and then close the queue for this portion of the, the agenda. We have a couple of um, logistics announcements um, with respect to the afternoon. I think it's important that we close um, on time. People have other commitments, and in fact, it's only allowing an hour for lunch for those of you that are coming back here for the donors meeting at 2. So, Adam, you have the floor, and then we have a series of uh, logistics announcements. Um, ah, good morning, everybody. Adam Peake. I'm <clears throat> I work for ICANN, um, but this is very much a personal comment, having been involved with the IGF for a while. Um, open forums that, that seemed to be a lot more last year, and I wondered if the criteria for selection had ch been changed or relaxed. Um, but having said that, I s did notice that there were a lot more governments and intergovernmental organizations um, holding open forums, and that seemed a particularly good way of encouraging participants from gov the governmental sector and would be something to encourage. I think it's difficult for government stakeholders to follow some of the um, criteria for workshop selection. It's, uh, it's difficult for them, I think, to um, get the balanced stakeholder participation um, and so on. It's a difficult process to follow. Um, so I'd like to encourage that opportunity for governments and IGOs to use the open forums, um, but at the same time would be interested in uh, what, what happened with the rules for selecting those. Um, so a bit of a contradiction in that statement, but I did think it was a useful thing to see more government participation in that way. Thank you. Uh, yes, um, we did increase the open forums last year to encourage government and IGO participation, which was one of our aims um, for last year, and especially since we were in Geneva, and there are a lot of government missions here, and there are a lot of IGOs here as well, which could take adv advantage of that. So th that was the reason why um, there was an in increase um, I don't think we did relax the rules. I think we actually tightened the rules a little bit. Um, we said that they have to be uh, treaty-based organizations or um, g g governments um, backing the open forums. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Chengatai. Um, we want to take just a few moments for a few announcements. Again, you've heard the announcement on the donors meeting in this room here at 2 o'clock. Um, there's an announcement to come from the Swiss government in a moment, and I um, need to announce that I will not be chairing the meeting from 3 to 4 today. Changatai will chair the meeting. I actually have a speaking slot at the um, WISIS um, high-level forum, and as part of the you know, continued support for outreach and greater visibility um, and ensuring that the WISIS forum um, certainly understands the IGF and the linkages between the two, thought that was too important an opportunity to pass up, but, you know, sadly it means I won't be here from 3 to 4. It's particularly sad for me because the next item is the 2017 IGF intersessional activities, lessons learned and suggestions for improvement, and I think most people here know how passionate I've been about supporting those and really trying to move those forward. Um, I wouldn't really suggest that we move the agenda. Um, the transcript is extremely helpful. I will read the transcript very carefully tonight for the section that I miss and make sure that I'm up to speed on that discussion for, um, for tomorrow. Um, so I think we'll leave it at that. I don't, I, I, if we were to swap it, we would have to swap that with the updates from related inter and governance initiatives and processes, followed by open discussion on possible IGF 2017 collaboration and um, I think it messes too much with people who possibly aren't in the room just now that might be coming a little bit later in the afternoon for that session so um, with, uh, so with sadness I will miss that section but um, come back and, and read it carefully um, I think did, were there any other announcements from the Secretariat before we turn to the Swiss government um, no, the only, oh, one other thing. Um, 
just a housekeeping announcement. Uh, could you please sign in on our website? There's a sign-up sheet because we have no idea who's here. The WISIS registration does not um, signify that you're coming for the IGF meeting, so it would be good to have your names on our website. I think there's also pieces of paper on the table which, which have the instructions. Thank you. Thank you, Chengachai. Jorge? Hello. Uh, good afternoon already. Um, I would like to make a more uh, social announcement, and this is that on the occasion of the WISIS Forum, which you are accredited to, uh, the Swiss government, uh, uh, the canton of Geneva, and the city of uh, Geneva are holding a reception uh, from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. in the first floor restaura restaurant area of the CCG, which is the building next to this one, where some of the WISIS activities are taking place. And as uh, WISIS uh, participants, uh, WISIS forum participants, you are cordially invited to take part there. And uh, we hope this is also a good opportunity for the new and old MAC members to gather and to exchange and network. So. Hope to see you there this afternoon. Thank you. Yet another significant contribution from the Swiss government. <laughs> um, I have one question for the donors meeting. Will that actually be transcribed and will allow online participation? I don't know what the... Well, it's going to be online participation, but we don't ask for transcription. Okay, but, the, but online participation is, is at least good. Okay, excellent. Thank you. We are adjourned. We will be back in this room at um, 2 o'clock for the donors meeting and 3 o'clock for the, the uh, MAG meeting continuation. Thank you. <laughs>